Hey guys, I wanted to bring a video to you that I've been looking into and uh, have finally got some information on that I'd like to share and get your opinions. This is going to be kind of a uh, information, kind of an, yeah, a story of information and then also a theory and I'll need your opinions of course. Uh, a lot of people are talking about feral people, wild men, and uh, first story I have is Mason County uh, it's going to be in Kentucky on US 68 happened in 1980 November uh, Noble Clay an Alabama truck driver he was hauling steel west on route 68 when he seen a figure on the opposite side of the road the highway he seen a figure on the side of the road so he turned on his high beams thinking that would probably be a hitchhiker when he approached the figure, he was shocked. It was enormous humanoid creature, as he described it. Said it had long white hair. He had even thought something had escaped from the zoo because it was such a hideous creature-looking thing. There was a report made on this, and is it, it is on file with the Maysville, Kentucky Police Department. Second one. Location. Estill County, Kentucky. 1985 local residents have been reporting a man-like figure prowling the woods near their houses bigfoot rumors soon started to circulate police investigating the wilderness apprehended a local man native to irvine that had been on the missing persons list for three years he was naked but covered with mud and foliage to the extent that the vines and moss and lichen were actually growing in his hair and on his body. He could not speak English. He was forcibly taken to Patty A. Clay Hospital in Richmond. No reports were ever made of him and no news releases were ever released. Location. Mayslick, Mason County, Kentucky, 1980. Victim, Charles Fulton. Charles and his family were watching TV when he heard his son's rooster get disturbed. When he looked out the front door, he seen a white hairy creature with pink eyes, which could have been red or close to that orange eye that people are seeing. He guessed this creature to weigh approximately 400 pounds and around 7 foot tall. It was holding the rooster by its neck and then threw it against the house. Then Ron ran back to his house and grabbed his 22 pistol. The creature then ran to a vacant lot beside his house at which he fired two rounds at the creature. It had long white hair like a horse's mane. He said it was man-like except for it also had pink eyes. Guys, I have to stop and say right there, if something leaves your property, it's not a threat to you. I would not take shots at anything that was not on my property that was fleeing on another property. Just putting that out there for you guys. Uh, Location, Red River Gorge, near Slade, Kentucky County, Powell County, year 1990. Witness encountered a face-to-face -face in the wilderness near Cloud Splitter Rock. An adult, in his 30s, Caucasian male, walking in the woods naked but covered with mud, leaves, and vines, matted to his hair and beard, giving him the swamp creature-looking appearance. As the man was walking, or creature as he said, it walked hunched over ape-like in its gait. It looked at the witness and then ran away like a wild animal. That brings me to another part of this I wanted to add in here. I don't know if any of y'all have heard. I know you've heard of the story, but I don't know if you've heard of some of this information I'm going to release to you. I've been digging deep into this for months. I actually started when I first started doing all this because it was one of the things that really caught my attention. And I'm going to release some of this to you guys. I think you're really going to find this uh, really, really uh, just very interesting. I did. Dennis Martin. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Dennis Martin. If you're not, uh, he went missing June 14th, 1969 in the Great Smoky Mountains. His father was William C. Martin. Dennis was six years old whenever he went missing. Dennis was last seen hiding behind bushes to scare his dad at a tree line on a trail they were taking in the Great Smoky Mountains. William, his father, said that he watched his child run behind the bush and was going to jump out and scare him ahead of time. Well, 
Dennis never returned from behind that bush. What was waiting behind that bush for Dennis? Nobody knows. His father says he ran two miles down the trail looking for his child. He knew Dennis could have not gotten that far, but after he wasn't able to find him after a two-mile search, he turned it into the park rangers. This is a key witness in this investigation, and I believe it wasn't taken seriously enough. Harold Key, a visitor to the park, reported hearing a loud scream the same afternoon that Dennis went missing. Same afternoon, shortly after the scream, he seen a disheveled man covered in hair, attempting to remain unseen, fleeing through the woods. He stated it had a red object over its shoulders. Dennis was wearing a red t-shirt. Despite the report, the FBI dismissed him as a witness and released the following statement. They stated it was more than five miles from where Dennis went missing and Key couldn't give an exact time. <laughs> How many of us have been in an incident where you have a car wreck, an armed robbery, somebody has a heart attack or something like that. Time can stand still. It can seem longer than what it was. And people in these circumstances that's even been scared or in these you know, situations, they know that time can really be hard to determine without actually looking at a watch. That's why police officers carry watches. That's why they, you know, time on our reports is very, very, very important. Uh, it's one of the main things that is stressed. Uh, but anyways, Jim Reich, the retired park ranger that worked at the time, said there was a failure to properly follow up either with the footprints or the sightings of a rough looking man, he stated. The location was downhill from where Martin disappeared and was more than reasonable for a relatively fit individual to cover the space in that length of time. There was another witness that, that also was with his son on a trail that said he saw a what he thought was a bare humanish looking man hiding behind a bush. His son saw the figure also and his son, his son thought that it was a hairy man. They said that they heard a kid scream and it scrambled off running. This is two people that have seen the same thing, pretty much the, uh, the exact same thing. They were both dismissed. 1,500 people searched for Dennis Martin. June 23rd, police dogs were brought in but would not track. They would just lay down and whimper and would not trail anything. The dogs, in fact, were so upset and so afraid that they could not even get them to eat or drink water and had to be removed from the search. The search ended on June 29th, 15 days later. Now here's the part that's gonna really get weird to you guys. This is the part I don't know if y'all have heard. That's why I didn't waste a lot of time and the other stuff on Dennis Martin because I don't wanna beat a dead horse. I know that stuff's already been talked about. This right here is what really struck me. Green Berets arrived and told the Rangers and independent searchers to leave the area that they were taking over. Okay. They stayed in the woods, the Green Berets, for one week. After they had left one of the Green Berets made the comment to one of the park rangers, we took care of what snatched Dennis. Okay. Before this, uh, this Green Beret, after telling him, after telling this stuff to the park ranger, he died in a car wreck a week later. But he said, quote, we took care of what snatched Dennis, okay? He told the park ranger this. He also told the park ranger before he died in a car wreck, they had killed 30 feral people. They were very large, and the one that snatched Dennis was also killed. He said they were very large with enormous strength, okay? He's talking to this park ranger. He also stated that they did find Dennis's remains, his bones and clothing at the scene, along with a lot of other bones. 
and he said the family was never going to be notified because they did not believe the family would be able to handle what had happened. Now here's the kicker. That Green Beret died a week later in a car wreck, okay? The park ranger that he told, Jim Reich, he also committed suicide. Both of these people knew or spoke about something that they weren't supposed to. In my opinion, one died in a car wreck, the other committed suicide. Jim Reich had even made comments before he died that there were things in those woods that were not human. And he said, well, he said, not completely human. They're aware of what's out there, guys. They sent a team in there. They, you know, this beret before he died, he says, you know, we killed over 30 of them. They were very large, very strong. They stunk. He said they stunk really bad. But he mostly talked about their size and their strength and how long their hair was and how, you know, just the vines and the moss and everything grew on them and how they would hunt people and how they were very interested in kids and they were cannibals, you know, they were cannibalistic. And these are things that they know about. So it goes to tell you that there, there are things out there they're not going to tell us about as far as Bigfoot, dogmen, werewolves, whatever. But these feral people, man, that really kind of, it was freaky to me just reading about it and then Poor Dennis Martin, you know, what did he go through, you know? What grabbed him behind that bush? What was waiting on him behind that bush, you know? And then took off running with him over his shoulder. And two sets of people see this and they hear the little boy screaming. And, you know, what was he going through? Then the Green Berets are sent in, you know, heavily armed. They kill, the, one of them says they kill over 30 of them. And the one that snatched Dennis. He talks about how large they are and how they're covered in hair. What are feral people, guys? Are they? Do you believe they're actual humans? Do you believe that they're, I don't know, these Bigfoot beings we're seeing? These dog men? What are they? It even has me a little puzzled on these, you know, these feral people. I'm looking really deep into it. But I wanted to share this with you and kind of get your opinions on, do you think Dennis Martin was taken by a feral person, a Bigfoot, a dog man, a kidnapper? What are your opinions on this, guys? I'd really like to hear those because this, this case really interests me. Hey, I appreciate y'all watching. We're going on another investigation coming up pretty soon. That home place was telling you about. It seems to be coming down out of the floodwaters, maybe accessible, so we'll be going there here pretty soon. Uh, we've been out the last couple of days, and we, nothing's happened as usual. Uh, like I said, it's hard to get you know encounters, but when we do, we share them with you. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. Hopefully the home place will show something up. And uh, look forward to your comments on this video. Take care and keep your head on a swivel.